In a previous video, we saw how to get inspiration for colors for an application by taking a photo, uploading it, and choosing some accessibility-friendly colors. In this video, we're going to see how to apply those colors to a theme in an Android app that uses Jetpack Compose. First of all, in a typical Android application, you'll define some colors in this resource file called colors.xml. Still a good idea to do that. In Jetpack Compose, it uses a slightly different model, though. Take a look at this package called UI Theme, and in here you'll see several colors that are defined and stored. This is simply a place where we can store colors. So let's add a few colors that we created from our color wheel. I'll start by Val. Defining the green color, which I call Plant Places Green, so it's this kind of green color up here. Simply take the hex number, so 0xff and then the hex number. Hex number from a website is easy to find. You can simply do inspect in something like Chrome, and you can see the hex number here, 136548, uh, or use the color wheel as I showed before. So that gives us that dark green color. Let's use the tan color as well. And once again, that gives us our tan, and you see a little preview of this back behind here. So we start with our colors. Now, we also have this concept of shape, which can give shape to things like our borders, our boxes, or our images, any kind of UI component where we're going to apply this material theme. Now, what's neat about a material theme is we essentially have layers. So we could have an image, maybe a profile picture, then on top of that we can put a circle, and we can mask out everything that's outside the circle. So we can layer one thing on top of another until we get the final look and feel that we want. So we store our shapes here, then we go to type, and this is kind of like a font family. One thing I remember from very early in design school is it's a good idea to have consistent fonts throughout your entire application. Uh, don't try to get artsy or cute and put a whole bunch of different fonts because it looks inconsistent. As a matter of fact, think of some of your favorite brands and think of the applications that they have or the websites that they have. Some brands have their own unique font. I can think of the University of Cincinnati and there's a font when I say University of Cincinnati font, it pops in my head. The one you see at Nippert Stadium, the one that you see just about anywhere on campus, you know, that is UC's font. So think about something like that that can be used to identify your brand. Next, we have theme. Now, theme is kind of neat because, you see, it uses these color factories to come up with a, a dark theme and a light theme. And note that the color factory is pointing right back to our color uh, KT that we saw just a moment ago. So I could change the primary color to dark green just as easily as that, just like I created. I should probably have a variant of that dark green as well. I'll leave it like that for now. And then for the secondary, we can say tan. And again, uh, that is the tan theme that I've defined before. Now, this is the application as it looked before we started doing any kind of design to it. Um, and I remember the first time I released an app to the Play Store back in 2013, the first feedback I got from it was, could you make it look more like an app? Because as a software developer, I tended to focus on function and not so much design. So we want to really think about colors that not only go well together, but also that represent our brand. So let's try it again with the changes I've made. The application loads again, and we see that not a whole lot of change, although the Save button now has a green background instead of having a blue background before. But let's take a look at something. When we go down in this theme file, we see there's this My Plant Diary theme, and we have the colors that determine if we're running in dark mode or if we're running in light mode. And, that, of course, that goes back up to the factory that we saw earlier where it sets colors for light and it sets colors for dark. Now, we also see material theme. It puts together the colors, the typography, the shapes, and the content. Now let's go to main activity and see if we can see where this is related. So we have our onCreate lifecycle method. Within that, we have set content. Within that, we have, guess what? My plant diary theme. So it's saying apply this theme to our application. But one interesting thing to notice here, all of the UI that we're creating so far is in this function called specimen facts. And specimen facts is called from within this surface component. Now look at what surface does. It's pretty cool. It, it has a color attribute, and we're defining that to material theme dot colors dot background. 
Now let's walk backwards, uh, starting with background, then color, then material theme, then my plant diary theme. So we know that my plant diary theme is something that we just saw in theme.kt. Uh, my plant diary theme has material theme. Material theme has an attribute called colors, which is referring to colors. Now what's colors? Well, we can control click into that and we see our dark color palette, our light color palette. That will take us back to several values that we have here in color.kt. So essentially we use that dot notation to walk that entire path back. Now, one thing we see in themes, and this is essentially just a default uh, composed application, but one thing we see in themes is it says, I've set these colors for you, but oh, by the way, there are other colors that you can set if you want as well, like background, surface, so on and so forth. And here's what they should look like. So I'm going to head and copy these, and or actually I'll just cut them and I'll paste them outside of this comment. Notice that very much in Kotlin style, we have a function call that has many parameters and they're set to defaults. So we only need to specify the ones that we want to specify. And typically, we'll specify those along with the parameter name. So primary, primary variant, secondary, background, surface, so on and so forth. These are essentially the parameter names. Now, we actually don't have to put the names there if we don't want to, as long as we specify the values in order, like we did back in the days of Java. But really, you know, it's descriptive. Go ahead and add it in there. It's descriptive, and it will help if you have a function and you don't know the order in which the parameters are. So let's go ahead and change background and surface to tan as well. Let's redeploy and see what it looks like. Aha, this is more like the look and feel that I like. Uh, looks more like the Plant Places website. Once again, uh, that those colors can kind of help to identify your brand if they are common across brands. Uh, in some cases, colors can even serve as a trademark identifier, uh, as was the case with Qualitex, which made ironing board colors in a very specific green gold color, and that became a, a legal case that set precedent. So, not always. Just think about color as being a way that people can associate your brand. Now, ideally, we'd like the whole background to be this tan color, and we could do that a couple different ways. We could set the background, or we could just have the surface component take up the entire height of the screen. I'm not going to worry about that just yet, because we know that this component, which is in yellow here, is eventually going to be one of many. As a matter of fact, when I see the white color here, I kind of think, you know, I kind of like that. So we can still play around a bit, but at least now we get a bit of experience understanding how these colors work. Now, on the other hand, one thing I do want to change, though, is you notice it's only taking up as much space as the components take up. It's also funny because if I start typing here, notice it will actually expand as we start typing. But you know what we really ought to do is make the best use of our screen real estate. A lot of times, because we don't know how wide a device will be, we will just set the text field to be as wide as the screen itself. Also notice with this type of text field or editable text, it does a really good job with the labels, where the labels are very visible until you give that particular field focus, then it takes the label and it puts it up towards the border. This is nice because it's saving from having a separate label for every component, which saves us screen space, and also it's very good for internationalization, because description is this long in English, but how long is description in German? Could be different. So a couple things we can do there, but nonetheless what I want to do is expand this component so it takes the entire width of the screen, and we can do that with a modifier. Let's go back to the main activity. We can do this with a modifier that we that we apply to our surface component. Now remember, once again, this is one of the nice things about Kotlin is that many functions can have parameters and we can assign defaults to them so that we only need to pass in the parameter values that we want to pass in and we'll often give them names. So in this case, we're already passing in color and we simply need to pass in another one, modifier. And simply, Alt Enter to import that modifier. And fill max width means we want to fill max width. Once again, Alt Enter will import that. That gives us max width on the surface component. Let's go ahead and apply that same modifier to our text fields as well. I navigate down to the block where I have my text fields and I simply paste.
Now notice that when the emulator renders, we're able to see the text fields from left to right occupy the entire screen. This is user friendly because the user can tap anywhere within that row and get focus on the text field. In, in mobile applications, because of the screen resolution size, we often uh, don't put multiple things on one row. So we could, and sometimes we do. Now the blue title bar looks a bit out of place. Now why is that bar still blue? Well, keep in mind that we are in an activity that's using Jetpack Compose. And that activity with Jetpack Compose is using the theme we've specified. But prior to Jetpack Compose, we used to specify our colors and our themes in a series of XML files. And that's what the entire application still uses. So let's go down to res and then values, and then let's go to colors. And you see an XML file here, and we can simply add a few new colors. Similar to how we did it in Compose, we started with FF, and then we add the color identifier, and that makes our dark green. Then for the tan color, D6BD91, and you see that it interprets those colors and gives us a little sample over there. Now, let's continue with this and go down to themes and themes XML. Color primary, let's say tan. Color on primary, let's give it the dark green color that we just defined. Now, down here you see Android status bar color. I am going to give that an alias. Notice it's pointing to an attribute here, so I'm going to say color primary. Now you see the title bar is much more appealing and it fits with our theme as well. So a little mix of our Jetpack Compose theme and also the traditional XML themes. So I hope this video has been helpful and as always I look forward to seeing your comments. Thank you.